When my wife's best friend accused me of inappropriate behavior, our lives turned upside down. Despite being cleared of any wrongdoing, her friend Kate's continued disrespect and bizarre actions have made me deeply uncomfortable. Now, I'm grappling with what I should tell my wife to cut ties with her lifelong friend, even as I fear being labeled controlling. What would you do if your partner's friend was out to sabotage your life? My wife and I have this mutual friend, ex-friend for me let's call her Kate, who we both knew independently and introduced us. Over the years, Kate and I drifted apart but still talked frequently. She's always been more of my wife's friend than me, best friend from childhood, etc., so it's never really bothered me. A few years ago, someone tangentially part of our friend group that I only semi-knew confided in Kate that I solicited her for nudes. I'd only talked to this person maybe once or twice, and it was only ever about her art, although it's worth mentioning that she has a good side hustle in drawing hentai. All I ever really said was she was talented at it, and I liked her art. I guess one of the pieces I particularly liked was a self-portrait, I won't get too into the details, but it looked nothing like her and was an anime girl, so I'm not sure how I would know that. Kate told my wife about this, who spent a week being upset about it before telling me I showed her the chats we had, and that was the end of it. Edit. I'll add that what I said about the self-portrait was something along the lines of, holy shit, this one's perfect the lighting and the figure are really hot, you should be doing this as a day job. She apparently only mentioned it in passing to Kate as interesting, her words apparently. Kate took it upon herself to tell my wife about it. When my wife confronted the friend, she didn't think I was trying to get nudes or anything but thought I knew it was a self-portrait. A few months later, Kate decided to take it upon herself and then tell my wife I asked to see pictures of her feet. Admittedly, I have a foot fetish, something my wife divulged to her, which I'm not particularly cool with, but I'm not super ashamed of it or anything, so I don't care all that much. The conversation Kate, in my opinion, misconstrued was her venting about how frustrating and objectifying it is that she feels like every guy wants to see her naked, and all I did was sympathize with that and said something along the lines of, yeah I mean, I'll admit there's a split second intrusive though about that I'll get when I meet people, but it's probably some caveman lizard brain shit. When my wife brought it up I again showed her the messages, and she agreed it was a misunderstanding. However, when she brought it back to Kate trying to mediate the situation, rather than defending it as a misunderstanding Kate, was adamant I was subtly fishing for nudes and feet pics. My wife didn't ask for this, but I let her go through all the messages again, and my phone slash computer and she found nothing. Kate decided to cut contact with me, and I haven't heard from her since. Edit, here's the exact conversation I had with Kate. Kate, I'm just so sick of it. Ugh. Kate, like the one guy from work I told you about. Kate, the mentor guy. Kate, he offers to take me to a place he knows to find something to wear to the presentation we're giving next week. Kate, so I go with him, and we're looking, and he keeps joking that we should look at lingerie. Kate, my con? Kate, what is it with men? Kate, like is it all, oh woman, must see their boobs. Me, what the fuck hell now? Me, is that the dude who offered to pay for the extra e-learning shit? Kate, yes. Kate, I thought he was genuinely nice, but I guess he was not. Kate, yet another in a long line of men who just want to see me naked. Kate, is it all men? Like, I don't get it. It's so fucking exhausting. Me, I mean, I've had the passing ha, she's attractive. I wonder what she looks like underneath her clothes, but they're more intrusive thoughts than anything I'd ever actively pursue because I'm not a monster. Kate, exactly. I have the same thoughts too, sometimes, but it's like. Kate, I don't go around asking to see every hot guy's dick. Me, maybe that's what he's hoping for face with tears of joy face with tears of joy. Kate, he has a wife too so it's like. I'll see Kate from time to time. The wife will have her over, or they'll be talking on Discord. I'll be polite and say hello, but she'll turn her back on me or very blatantly ignore me. Which is fine if that's what she wants to do, then so be it. But there was one time that particularly pissed me off, they were sitting out back, and I'd come through to bring in groceries and put some stuff away in our shed. She had sandals on, and when she saw me, she asked my wife if she could borrow a pair of socks, which my wife obliged. Putting it bluntly, I'm uncomfortable with her being friends with Kate. My wife doesn't have many friends though as she suffers from some pretty bad mental health issues and doesn't get out much, and I don't want to be some controlling asshole telling her who she can and can't be friends with. I just hate feeling like I have to be on guard when she's around, and I particularly hate that my wife who agreed it was a misunderstanding on Kate's part, and probably poor wording on mine, didn't defend me. I haven't told her to stop being friends with Kate, but I have mentioned that maybe she shouldn't invite Kate around if I'm home, or if we're going somewhere and Kate is there, I'll stay home. The wife says I'm just making the situation more awkward and making things uncomfortable for her, being that she's her best friend and I'm her husband. 
For context, sometime before this, I had a friend who expressed concern that my wife might be telling me, she didn't want me to go out and see my friends anymore. This was one of me, as the relationship was new. I had a new job, and I wasn't really fond of going out to bars anymore, so I never communicated this. He was particularly disrespectful about it, and I cut him off without question. I don't expect her to cut her off, but I would, at a minimum, appreciate her telling Kate off when she does particularly disrespectful things. Am I wrong here? So I ended up showing my wife the original post because we had another argument about Kate. She read through it and some of the comments. I think she had a bit of a coming to Jesus moment as she came and sat down and agreed that Kate had been acting weird about this whole situation. We talked it out, and I admitted I wasn't comfortable with Kate anymore and wouldn't stand in the way of them being friends, but I don't want her coming around the house anymore, so she agreed she would. 1. Not bring Kate here anymore and 2. Have a talk with Kate about what her problem is. Over the long weekend, we decided to forego our usual tradition of going to one of our parents for a big meal, so we just stayed in and ordered takeout. My wife and Kate made plans to hang out too, which was fine as I had some personal hobby stuff I wanted to log some time on. Kate apparently did not take being told she couldn't come over when I was home very well because she sent me a long message about how I was controlling and abusive. The wife snapped and called her. They argued on the phone for a while. I didn't listen or anything, but my wife told me she set Kate straight and basically told her she needed to cut the shit and apologize to me, or she'll cut out Kate. After midnight on Sunday I got my apology from Kate. It seemed pretty heartfelt and sincere, but I just said, thank you for the apology, please understand I'm fine with you and your wife being friends, but I would prefer to continue just being pleasant with each other. She didn't respond right away so I went to sleep. I woke up in the middle of the night to pee and saw she had responded. And uh, this is where it got a bit odd. She sent a photo of her legs with her feet in the frame, in front of the mirror, so I was sure to see all of her feet. It seemed intentional to me, honestly. One foot had a heel, and the other was bare. She accompanied this with the message, what do you think, why slash n? I woke up my wife to show her, because I didn't want this too to be blown out of context by her. My wife took a minute to comprehend what was happening and concluded, she probably meant to send that to her, since they get each other's opinions on outfits and shoes, a bit weird to do at 1am, in my opinion, but it made sense. I replied, uh, sorry, did you mean to send that to me? In the morning, she had unsent the photo and message, and said nothing else. Later in the day she called my wife and said she accidentally sent me a picture of her new shoes and her feet in them, and she wanted my wife to confirm I didn't save it to use later. I think this is where my wife started piecing together what some of the comments were saying about Kate being a shit stirrer, putting the phone on speaker and flat out asking if Kate did it on purpose. Kate got angry and asked how my wife could think of it. Their wife just said, because you know he has a foot fetish and sent him a foot guy's equivalent of a full body nude. She started demanding she check my phone because she was having a panic attack over the thought of me jerking off to her feet. My wife rarely gets angry or petty, it's just not who she is, but my wife basically replied to that with, a uh, Kate, you should have said something sooner, I thought it was an apology photo for him, so I already jerked him off while he looked at it. There was a huge hours long argument that followed, but TL, DR Kate is no longer there. Apparently, their friend group has wanted to stop dealing with her bullshit for some time, and all jumped on this to cut her out. Sayonara Kate, you fucking drama queen. My daughter's relationship seemed perfect, until I realized she knows almost nothing about her mysterious boyfriend. As a mother, I couldn't shake the feeling that something was off. When my daughter and I decided to confront him together, we had no idea what secrets might be uncovered. Is he hiding something sinister, or am I just being an overprotective parent? Here's our journey to find out. My daughter, 21, started dating her boyfriend about two years ago. She had just broken up with her ex, who she had been with for four years, so I thought maybe it was a rebound, and I wasn't too worried about it. But as time went on, their relationship became more serious than I thought it was going to be. My daughter was happier and more energetic, started eating better, and actually started to take care of her health so that she could be better for him. So I wanted to get to know him more, which in my head seemed pretty reasonable since she is my daughter. But when I talked to her boyfriend, trying to get to know him better, for whatever reason, he was very vague and even seemed dismissive about the topic. I thought that maybe he was just shy so I asked my daughter about it, but she told me that he doesn't really talk about himself a lot and she didn't even know much about him. Besides his few hobbies, the only thing she really knew about him were that he was either currently serving in or working with the military, travels a lot for his work, speaks at least four different languages fluently, grew up without parents as an orphan, and where he lived. And as a mother, the fact that my daughter didn't know much about her partner was an issue for me. He wasn't active on social media or anything, so I couldn't go the old name search route. When I learned he was either currently serving or working with the military, I asked my retired vet father to talk to him. But after my father had a conversation with him, he told me that her boyfriend was fine and that I shouldn't overthink it without any further discussion. In fact he supports their relationship and they seem to have become pretty close, spending time together talking in the garage, going out for drinks and food, watching old movies, and even going shooting together. 
I feel like I need to know more about him since he is my daughter's partner. But I also don't want to ruin anything because I can tell my daughter is happier with him than she has ever been. I've even considered private investigator as an option, but I feel like that's going a bit overboard. Should I just accept him for now and expect more details later, or what should I do? Edit 1. I was never going to hire a PI. I just mentioned it in my post to show the severity of my worry. And it is possible for a parent to be worried about their child without any other hidden agenda. I was once her age and I only wanted her to live a better life than mine. Edit 2. I'm 46 years old. I haven't really tried to force him to tell me everything about him to me. I've asked him twice over the years and he dismissed the topic both times. When people ask me what languages he speaks, I know he speaks English and French, because those are the two I speak. My daughter has seen him speak Spanish, and mentioned that he has been teaching her German. My father mentioned that he thinks he might know Dari or something else. And for everyone saying that he is a guaranteed super top secret government person, I think the chances of him being a common with a secret family halfway across the country is higher than him being Jason Bourne Jr. My daughter has, on multiple occasions, expressed the discomfort of not knowing much about what he is doing, but she told me she is willing to just accept it and go with it for now. Screw all of you, who told me that I'm a narcissistic nosy helicopter parent. I talked to my daughter last night about my concerns. I told her that I'll always worry about her, even if she does end up hating me or pushing me away. When I told her about my concern about her relationship, I expected her to hang up or get upset at me, but instead, she broke down and cried a little bit because she also sometimes felt those worries. She told me that although he does make her happy, she feels that they haven't really grown any closer or made any progress in the relationship, and the fact that she still didn't know a lot about his life made her overthink and stress herself out. She also told me that she had thought maybe he was cheating on her or something since they didn't have a sexual relationship, my daughter is abstinent, but he showed no real signs of cheating. We talked on the phone for about 3 hours and she decided that she would invite her boyfriend over to my house this Saturday, and we could ask him to tell us anything he can tell us. We don't plan on forcing him to say anything he can't. At the end of the call, my daughter told me that she loves me and that she is lucky to have a mother like me who worries and cares about her. I also told my father that although I love and trust him, I still would like to know more. He wanted to know why, and I told him, just in case the boyfriend is a con man, what are the chances he might be able to BS his way into my father's safe zone? He thought about it for a while and decided that I had a point and that he didn't want to take those chances if there were any. So screw all of you who said that I was being an overbearing bossy and controlling mother who will end up getting cut out of my daughter's life. My daughter thinks I'm being perfectly reasonable and is glad I care about her. Many people on the previous post told me he could be a special force slash operation slash seal slash three letter slash spy. I honestly feel like if that really was the case, then he should be able to tell us a cover story or just tell us that he can't talk about it rather than just dismissing the question awkwardly when it comes up. He wasn't just doing that to me. Whenever any member of our family or my daughters asks him a question or something to try to get to know him, he shuts it down. And seriously, life isn't a movie. There's a higher chance of him being a weirdo who is secretly hiding a family halfway across the county than the chances of him being Bond and Bourne's love child. And to the Redditor who told me I should try to seduce the boyfriend, no. Just no. Edit 1. No, my plan wasn't to interrogate the boyfriend. All I mentioned to her was my discomfort with the fact that she knew so little about her boyfriend. My daughter was the one who came up with the idea of talking to him about it because she has the right to at least try to talk to him about it as his girlfriend. Then she asked me if I wanted to be there just to support her, and I agreed since I was planning on baking cheesecake for my daughter that day anyway. Edit 2. Some people mentioned that my attitude towards some of the comments changed compared to my first post. That's just because I ignored it at first, but I remembered that I could return the same tone and attitude I received from others. And yes, according to some comments, I could definitely be a bitch. But fortunately for me, my father didn't teach me to be a little bitch. Edit 3. Ike liked to make it clear to people that I didn't make my daughter go for abstinence. I was an abstinent, and neither was my husband. And we aren't involved in any religion or philosophy that promotes abstinence. My daughter decided that she wanted to be abstinent after her middle school sex ed because she didn't want to be a kid with a smaller kid. And no, we aren't in any school district that promotes abstinence to kids. After confronting my parents about favoritism towards my sister, I embarked on a journey of self-discovery and healing. Through therapy and family sessions, I began to understand the root of my resentment and jealousy. This is the story of how I transformed my relationship with my family and took steps towards a brighter future. It has been a very interesting time for me and my family. I wanted to share because you Redditors are brutal but fair. Some told me I am rambling, and yes I do so I try my best this time. My family after taking some days off work to process it all, my BIL found me a therapist and I started immediately. We have also done group sessions and couple ones, aka me and dad, me and mom, and my sister. It has helped me see all the issues 
and we are learning to communicate better as a family so nobody, me, feels unloved or unappreciated ever again. I now know I have a long road ahead of me, but I want to be better. My parents say they just want the best for me, and they want me to feel loved. Also, I am moving back home. After high school I moved out because I wanted to do things like my sister, but I felt it was the best option, so when my parents gave me the option, I thought it over and agreed to it. These are baby steps, but good ones. My sister she didn't talk to me at all for about 10 days, and this might sound stupid, but it is the longest she hasn't communicated with me ever. It hurt me a lot, and I knew I hurt her a lot. In our session, she showed me a list of many messages people send about me. They were all positive, praising my talents. She said, we are different, but great in our own ways, and the reason I usually don't hear how great I am is because people don't praise me directly. She also told me most of the time, when something happens that my parents know she might give me shit about, they simply don't tell her so I don't have drama and joked maybe I am the true golden child since they shield me. She is talking to me again, and has helped me a lot. Am I still jealous of her? Yes, but I want to transform that into admiration. My ex while I know my feelings are mine and I am responsible for them, my ex did throw gasoline at it. She was always the first to point out anything my sister got that I didn't, or how much money everybody spent on things etc. Long story short we broke up. Long story, I told her I was considering moving back with my parents, and maybe getting a masters or something like that. She was not pleased with it and kept asking about the wedding, but I told her I could not think about marriage at that moment, and that maybe we could also use a break, I also told her I would give her 3 months to find a place to stay, or she could pay rent on the house, my parents own it. She was very angry and told me I had to marry her, and if not at least let her live rent free and cover utilities and food because I was breaking up out of the blue. I told her that was the reason I was giving her 3 months, and she could use her salary since she didn't use a single cent while we were together. Then things got weird, and bad. She told me she was calling her family, not leaving the house and would sue me for mental distress. I panicked, she said the same back in the day when I tried breaking up, but then convinced me she was the only one who loved me. But this time I called my family, and they told me to lock myself out of the house and call a friend of my sister's. He came and told her she could sue, she could do whatever she was not getting anything, and that my offer of three months was off, and he wanted her out ASAP. He took a video with the state of everything, and told her if things were damaged, I would sue her, it turns out my sister told him this might be coming, so he got in for from her, and was prepared for it, and did it as a favor to her since they are kindergarten friends. A couple of my cousins stayed with me until she left days later, and her dad told me I would go to hell. She is still working in the company and will have a job as long as she performs, but I have no relation with her at all anymore and haven't been to the office. Yes, there is nepotism, and my family hires each other. But nobody would take away her job, because she does an okay job, and is always on time. I hope she finds love again, just not with me. And me I am single, at home, and most likely unemployed in the next month since my parents say I should focus on myself and my mental health. My BIL has been one of my rocks through this, and he truly cares for all my family, and we are becoming true friends. My grandma let me know nobody liked my ex, and she is happy we are not together anymore. She says they all started disliking her when she got upset they didn't get her expensive things for our first Christmas. My friends also told me they didn't like her. Turns out everybody wanted it to end, and some said so jokingly over the years, but they thought she helped me out and made me happy, so they dealt with her. I hope I get better luck in love, but I need to get better too. I might take up the offer to start over abroad, but I feel more positive. And yes, my sister and I are trying to find common ground. She truly is amazing, and the more I get to know her and her flaws and weird things like her lemon juice obsession, the more I like her. In the end, speaking my truth got me what I needed, and while I was a huge ah, uh, now, I can admit how privileged I am. Still not perfect, but a little less ah. Uh. My last update. I wanted to give you my final update before, but a redditor let me know about a very cruel post mocking me, and it sent me into a spiral. I am lucky to feel stronger and want to update you mainly to conclude this chapter of my life. I also want to thank you because I have received a lot of support, kindness and love, which I feel is just the right thing. I will also try to keep it straight. My ex since I left the company we have not talked much, but she became upset when I told her I was not coming back and we would be selling it. My dad made a deal with a friend that every employee who wanted to would get the option to stay at least 3 years and would keep their position and not be demoted. I told her that, but she said it was unfair that people already treat her differently, and she feels people like her less. I told her I hadn't said anything, but I knew people were not crazy about her before, and it doesn't surprise me that now that she is not related to any boss, they are not putting up with her. We had a big conversation about my future, and it was obvious she was not with me for the right reasons. My sister I told her about my posts, and she asked me to read them. After a little thought I told her my username, and she said she wanted to check it out and we could talk about it later. She was very upset. People were mean to me, but very thankful people called me out because I really needed that. 
she said her lemon juice thing was not that weird and teased me about it. In getting to know her more, I have also been told things like they have lost two babies, but I was not told since I didn't seem interested in their life, and she was afraid I wouldn't take it well, and it broke me. It made me realize my sister is really a human, and not a myth, and she has suffered things I can't even understand. It made me really ashamed I was not there for her, because I was selfish and arrogant. Even in the pain, she thought of how I would feel because, yes, my sister does love me. She has assured me she loves me unconditionally, but now she is starting to like me again. My Bill and parents my BIL is an amazing man, I really hope one day I am like him in my own version. I get more and more of why he truly deserves to be with my sister, and he is full of love and patience. We had a long conversation about them having kids, and I told him to please don't think I am an obstacle. He was really moved because he told me they were considering not trying at all until I was better, but I know in my heart I would not forgive myself if I prevented them from having babies. My parents told me now that I am making changes in life, they would like to spend seasons in Germany, and the only reason they didn't before, is because they wanted to be close to me. It turns out they wanted to be close to me all along, but I was just too stupid to notice. Me I'm moving to Germany. I decided to just try something new. My sister and I are helping me with all the paperwork. I will be going through with an applicant permit, and I feel very happy about it. My parents are helping me translate my documents and do everything to make them legal and all. I'm applying for a master's degree and will get support from my family, the sale of the business, and a little job my bill got me, I'm just finalizing things and will be moving at the end of the year. My sister owns her own department and she will host me until I find my own. I'm already taking German classes and my bill helps me practice too. That is the reason I know without a doubt my ex is not for me because when I told her I was moving to Germany, her only question was if she could come too and if my parents would be willing to help her out since she doesn't get a wedding now. She has been posting things about my sister and how she destroyed her life with the schemes but my sister's friend sent her notice letting her know we would sue her and she stopped naming her and now it is all passive aggressive posts without my sister's name. I apologized to my sister, but she only asked me if I would ever get back with my ex, and when I said no, she told me she couldn't care less about what my ex did. I am working very hard on my mental health. I know it may take months or years to be in a place where I have zero jealousy, but I also know it is for the best. I have not started dating again, even if some friends suggested it, because I want to be a worthy man, and I am moving, so I see no point. My therapist is amazing, and since we do the sessions online, it shouldn't be a problem. Sometimes, I reevaluate some memories and realize people did like me, did love me, did care about me, but I just couldn't see it. My sister is truly just extraordinary, and I couldn't see it because I didn't truly know her and was so focused on myself. I now know I am also extraordinary in my own way, or at least she keeps telling me that, and I should stop comparing myself to her or anybody else. I never really appreciated how much my parents thought of me or did for me, but now I know my family loves me, and we are not perfect. I am not perfect, but I will never take them for granted. I'm looking forward to a better future, a better relationship with my family, and if I'm lucky enough, a new nephew or niece. Thank you for all you have told me, and for being the kick I needed to change my life. I am very grateful I came to this site.